about 25 gigatons of carbon are cycled through the oceans by microbes each year. And this process is carried out by many different groups of organisms playing different roles at different times when interacting with each other. And the whole process has got significant impact on the health of the planet. So it's almost as if there's cash flow through the economy. If any of the steps is broken, then the whole cycle can come to a grinding halt. And that means it's not the beginning of the death of our planet. And so one thing we were curious about is what are the kinds of interactions that are at play across two specific groups of organisms. So we looked at algae and we looked at um, small microbes called archaea, which um, are heterotrophic archaea, meaning they live on, uh, they eat sugars and other organic compounds. So the algae is, you know, fixed carbon, and they are the primary producers in most of these environments. So our question was, how does the carbon go from the algae to the archaea, as that is a critical step in uh, sequestering carbon and then remineralizing the carbon. And what we found, and we were looking at this algae from uh, salty waters, and what we found was they were dying in very large numbers when nighttime arrived, and then they were regenerating at a comparable rate or better the subsequent morning. So the population stayed somewhat constant. In fact, it increased over time at a rate that was measured in the environment, but no one had looked at the dynamics of the process. So instead of going linearly up, it was going through cycles where the population was crashing out, coming back up, and it kept doing that. And when we characterized this process in some more detail, and what we found was the, the mechanism by which the algae were dying was a programmed event. It's called programmed cell death. So what these algae do, I think it's important to understand first, and then you'll appreciate why they might be killing themselves in such large numbers. So when you live in salty waters, there's a lot of osmotic pressure that you have to deal with. It's almost as if you put salt on a slug and you see it oozing liquid and dying eventually. So what the algae do is they sequester carbon using sunlight as the energy source, and they pump the carbon, a lot of the carbon, towards uh, production of glycerol. And as you know, glycerol is viscous. And glycerol accumulates, accumulates inside the cell and protects it against salt pressure. Now, in salty waters, carbon dioxide doesn't dissolve very well. So there's a limited supply of carbon dioxide. So by pumping so much carbon towards glycerol, and there's seven molar glycerol, glycerol inside the cell, so that's a lot of glycerol, the cells are essentially using up all the carbon they can use. And so regenerating the population becomes a challenge because there isn't enough carbon in the environment. So by killing themselves in such large numbers, they are recycling the carbon and recycling the nutrients so they can then regenerate a uh, new population through cell division. But in the process, when they release all the nutrients, inevitably the neighbor, neighboring organisms also benefit from it. So they've also taken advantage of this. But what was interesting to us was that the organisms that use the nutrients released by the algae also provide something back which improves the productivity of the algae. Mm -hmm. So this is really a system of interactions amongst different organisms where one is providing nutrients to the other organism that then reciprocates in kind. And this type of an interaction um, being driven by a programmed event is for us fascinating because it tells us that it's not just a passive process where one organism is eating another organism or when one dies the other eats whatever is spilled out. Here, it's being actually controlled by a, a program where it is triggered in a tiny manner every night and there's structure to it so that not all the cells undergo this process, a certain fraction undergo this process, and that the dying cells benefit their own kin in the process, which is kind of counterintuitive. So in the end, if you look at this from a bigger perspective, you can see all this carbon being pumped into the oceans by these algae and then a program then coming in play that triggers the release of the carbon and then the step, the next step ensues. So you can almost think of this as a cycle that is going in steps that is coordinated with the day-night cycle.